Outlook will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you Swiss Family Robinson, a tale of sweeping adventure starring Walter Pigeon and Lorraine Day. harbor in their hearts the dream of one great adventure, to break away from a settled humdrum life and find somewhere beyond the gray horizon the glittering shores of El Dorado. One day, against all convention, I, Anton Robinson, professor of ancient history at the University of Bern, abandoned my position, uprooted my family, and set sail for a problematic post in fabled faraway Ceylon. two weeks at sea when a great storm struck and for six days and nights raged unabated. The ship broke asunder. We were adrift in a lifeboat hopelessly lost until the seventh day when we found ourselves mercifully swept by the wind and current to an uncharted tropical island. Thus began the real and true adventure of the Swiss family Robinson. An adventure more remarkable and more meaningful than any dream I had ever had. Robinson, brought to you with the best wishes of the Rexall Drug Company and the 10,000 independent Rexall druggists who recommend and sell Rexall drug products at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign. Starting tomorrow at your Rexall store, big bargains are yours for just a penny more. Starting tomorrow and for the next six days, save money at Rexall's famous one-cent sale. This is your chance to save dollars by making every penny count. Would you do this right now? Reach for the magazine section of today's Sunday newspaper. Turn to this two-page ad and keep it handy. After the program, get the family together and check off the bargains. Right this minute, Rexall druggists all over the country are making final preparations for this great sale with guaranteed products shipped fresh from the Rexall laboratories. Their quality is money-back guaranteed. And just look what a penny more can do. The regular price for this bottle of 100 aspirin tablets is 59 cents. But during the Rexall one-cent sale, two bottles for just 60 cents, twice as much for a penny more. Rexall Ready Shave Aerosol Shave Cream. Regular price, 98 cents. Two for only 99 cents. Two for the price of one, plus a penny. Check the ad. Check the bargains. 361 money-saving bargains. Stationery. Children's vitamins. Beauty buys. Lovely Christmas cards for early shoppers. Household needs. You'll never have a better chance to stock up and save. The big Rexall one cent sale starts tomorrow and it lasts for six days only. And remember, you'll find these savings only at your Rexall store. This is a little drier. Fritz, see what water and rations are left there. Up, Ernest, lads, you can't sleep there. Come on, son. Up you go, boy. Over here with mother. I can't carry you. I'm too tired.
What? It's empty, sir. No, no, no. And the rations. We've all gone overboard, sir. No water, Anthony. No water and no food. No. What shall we do? As soon as it's daylight, we'll find both. Is this a cannibal island, Papa? No, Ernest, no. Don't no. try and go to sleep, lad. <laughs> What's the matter, sir? You hurt? Oh, I twisted my ankle getting off the boat. Can I do something? No, it's not serious, confound it. You're, you're safe now, my darling. Come on. Try and go to sleep. Mama, yes. do you think anyone else got to shore? Oh, yes. I'm sure they did. You're not going to leave me, are you? No, I'm right here. It's all over. There's nothing more to be frightened. Mama, where are we? This looks very much like a cannibal island to me. <laughs> Nonsense, Ernest. Now, please, children. Do cannibals eat old people or young people first? Ernest, they only eat people over 90. So we're all quite safe. Children, before you go to sleep, I want to say something to you. We have been through a terrible ordeal, and you behaved quite splendidly. I'm very proud of you. Now the important thing is that we're all here together, alive and safe. You know that God has been watching over us all through this storm, and he's watching over us now, so there's nothing more to be frightened of. Is that understood? I'd like to say something, Papa. Well, what is it, lad? You have to have beads and bits of glass to trade with cannibals. Otherwise, they'll eat us up. Ernest. There are no cannibals on this island. This is probably a small island very near the mainland, and we shall only be here for a short time. You must think of this as a camping trip. Like the outings we used to take in, in the mountains at home. Yeah. But there was a hotel in the mountains with all kinds of things to eat and cuckoo clocks. Oh, keep quiet, Ernest. If Papa says everything will be all right, it will be all right. You do swear it'll be all right. We won't have to stay here long. We are going to be rescued, Sue. Of course we are. I give you my word. There's my hand on it, Liddy. I wonder if cannibals make you take off your clothes before they cook you. Wouldn't that be awful? Dear Lord, thank you for watching over us in our peril. Thank you for leading us alive and whole and together to the shore. Neither hunger nor thirst nor any strangeness nor difficulty shall defeat us here, for we have full faith in thy divine protection. As the roar of the hurricane abated and the first gray light of dawn appeared, the jungle at our back seemed to come alive. The phantoms of the night gave way to the no less terrifying reality of the day. Facing our want of the simplest necessities of life, water, food, and shelter. What are you going to do, Anton? Fritz and I are going exploring. I'm certain we'll find food and fresh water around here. It's water we need most. Yeah. I'd like something to eat. Well, we'll have something of everything before very long. Fritz and I are going exploring. Be careful, the cannibals. Yeah. Oh, I sure wish we had some glass beads with us. <laughs> Hester was an alarm clock. If you give them an alarm clock, then they won't eat you up. They won't? And they'll make you one of them, too. Oh, I will listen to you! I'm thirsty, Mom. No, dear. Father, if we could find a way of getting these coconuts down. Maybe I can climb up that high. No, Fritz. It's too dangerous. Father, take this, but only fire in case of an emergency. Don't go too far away and stay together, please. And Fritz, you put something on your head. The sun's so strong. Mother, I'll be all right. Don't worry. This dress is all sticky with salt water. I feel so awful hot and prickly. I know, darling. And as soon as your, your father finds some fresh water, you can bathe and I'll wash it for you. I bet those coconuts are full of milk. I bet if we got them down, we'd have enough to drink for weeks. 
Now your father will see to everything. We're all together and that's all that matters. told mother she might know how to bind it up soon. No, oh, she's got enough on her mind with the children. Fritz, now please do exactly as I say. And never mind if it hurts, we can't help that. Ease that shoe off. <clears throat> now roll the sock down. Will you? It's terribly swollen. You think that bone is broken? Oh, now go ahead. I don't think so, sir. Now look, Fritz, I've got to walk. We've got to find food and help. You'll have to bind it up for me. Well, I might bind it up wrong and make it worse. I think you should tell Mother. Fritz, the important thing is not to let Mother and the children know how desperate our situation is. That's for you and me to face. I'm counting on you, Fritz. Well, you won't be able to walk for days. I'll walk because I have to. This whole thing is my idea. I got everybody into this mess. Your mother never wanted any part of it. Now, come on. Mother! Run, quick! <laughs> You know, it's true what the book said. They do get angry and throw things at you if you annoy them. Where's your father? Well, he sent me on ahead because of... Has something happened to your father? Mother, he made me promise not to tell you. Tell me what? Fritz! He sprained his ankle and it's worse than he thought. Stay with the children. Why'd you fire the gun? I shot at some monkeys to make them throw coconuts at us. Well, did they? Yes. Oh, bless oh. you, Franny. Bless you. Oh. Anton, what purpose did it serve to hide this from me? No, it's nothing serious. It's just a turned ankle. Oh, Anton. Oh. Don't be angry with me, Franny. I'm not angry, Anton. But you must understand that anything that happens to you now endangers us all. Yes, and I wanted this trip to be so wonderful for all of us. Franny, I didn't arrange for us to be shipwrecked, you know. Ah, oh, don't shut me out, girl. I don't want to, Aunt. I'm trying not to. But you must realize what this wild scheme of yours has cost us. Are you all right, Papa? Well, I'm as right as rain. What happened, Papa? Just turn my ankle a little, that's all. Coconut milk, Papa. Ooh. You know what it tastes like? Well, now, let's see what it tastes like. It tastes just like coconut milk. Yes. <laughs> well, now that Mother has solved the problem of the coconuts, I think it's up to me to solve the problem of the fish, don't you? Please do, Papa. I am starving. Give me a hand there, will you, Fritz? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, say, Mother, could you part with one of these fine metal hairpins of yours? Oh, now we've got a hook. Uh, oh, there's a good length of twine in the boat, sir. Get it, Fritz, yes, will you? Sir. We've got the hook and the line. Now all I need is some bait. Ernest, I saw some little pink crabs down at the water edge. Crabs pinch, Papa. Now, Robinson Crusoe wasn't afraid of crabs, my boy. But Ernest Robinson is. Well, then I'll have to wait with Fritz. No, he won't. I'll get them. <laughs> I will not eat any fish that is caught in a crab. You won't, eh? A crab is an ugly thing that makes me sick. Yes. In fact, I'm getting sick right this second, Papa. Are you? I'm hungry. I'll eat the fish. I'll even eat the crabs. What can I do, Papa? I tell you what you can do. You can help Mother make an oven. Now dig a hole in the sand, line it with rocks, just like we did on those camping trips, remember? Off you go now. Come on, Mother. There we are. Anton, how do you do it? How do I do what? How do you make a, a disaster seem like an outing on a holiday? What disaster? We're all here, alive and together and well, full of good ideas and capable of everything, even to bringing coconuts down from trees, huh? <laughs> Twine, sir? 
fall splendid. Well, nice. well, That's I'd, the life I guess I'd better go help Lydia. You're sure you're going to catch these fish, Anson? Well, that is an insulting question. <laughs> Fritz, I'm afraid you'll have to do this exploring alone. Coconuts and fish are all very fine, but we've got to find a source of fresh water. Now, you sneak off before Mother sees you. No, 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 you keep the gun. Father, is it possible that this island can be inhabited by savages or wild animals? Yeah, well, until we find out otherwise, the answer is yes. You've got to expect anything in that jungle. Yes, sir. Fritz, take care. You're going in my place, and if anything should Nothing's happen... Nothing's going to happen to me, sir. Thank you for depending upon me. Good luck, boy. Thank you, sir. God, if ever you made fish bite, make them bite now. Anton, where is he? Where is he? Now, Mother, the boy is safe. He's got the gun. He's perfectly able to take care of himself. How can you say that? How can you possibly know what may be living out there in that jungle? Natives, wild beasts. You should never have let him go off alone. Oh, now, come and sit down here, Franny. I can't sit down. I can't rest until the children are all together. I can stand anything as long as we stay together. I mean, there's no sense in exhausting yourself with worry. We've come through a cataclysm, and apart from this old ankle of mine, quite unscathed. Come through. Oh, yes, we've come through all right, with nothing. Do you realize we have absolutely nothing? No clothes, no food, no medicine. I mean, we have each other, we have the children, and with faith in God, we'll survive. Do you know, during the hurricane, I felt that God had been washed away, along with everything else. Strange, and I felt the exact opposite. I felt that God was very close to us all through that storm. I feel he's close to us now. Look at this radiant sky, this old churning, salty, dark gray ocean. Look how lush and lovely this strange foliage. Ah, Franny, Franny, is God's creation only fright and fear? Oh, please, Anton, don't try to persuade me now that my fears are childish. Have faith, girl. Have faith that we shall survive, that we'll continue our journey just as we started it, as a new and wonderful and unknown event in our lives. I can't. I can't have faith in something I never wanted. Father! Father! Oh, dear God! What is it, boy? Look! Huh? Look! Fritz, are you all right? Yes, I'm sorry. Mangoes, breadfruit, lime. I'm sorry I took so long, but Father, on there are, there are bananas, there are pineapples, there's fish, there's fresh water, there's a whole stream of fresh water. Father, there's everything, there's everything. We're rich, we're rich. <laughs> And so we had survived the first day. We had met the first challenge. But in my heart of hearts, I knew that unknown perils lay before us. And as I watched my loved ones, I prayed we had the courage to meet them. Here is America's best known name in drugs. The brand name most Americans think of first when they need drug products. The brand valued so highly that only specially qualified pharmacists can sell it. There are 10,000 of us, Rexall druggists all over the country. Independent registered pharmacists carefully chosen by the Rexall Drug Company. And ours are the only stores where you can buy Rexall drug products. There are other brands on our shelves, but Rexall is the one we recommend, the one we stand behind with a money-back guarantee. The reason for that is simple. Druggists know that Rexall scientists are always working to bring you new and ever finer products. 
one of the latest has special interest for women. It's called Bright Set, a new hairspray that at last has not a trace of lacquer or gooey base. Prove it yourself. Put the hairspray you now use on your mirror like this. Next, spray on new Bright Set. Then wait about 60 seconds till the mirror dries. See? The ordinary spray left a smeary blur, but the Bright Set is completely clear. No film, no fog, no flaking. Bright Set does more than shape and hold your hair. It leaves it mirror bright. And though Rexall brings you the finest modern science can provide, it still lets you pay only budget prices. New Bright Set is already an outstanding value at its regular price of one dollar. But during the one cent sale starting tomorrow, you can get two for only a dollar and one cent. So when you want to be right in quality and price, be sure you ask for the Rexall brand in a Rexall store. We recommend that you always choose the Rexall brand in a Rexall store. As the first days passed into weeks and no sign of rescue came, we raised our beacon fire to the hilltop and bent our efforts on building a tree house in a sheltered glade which Fritz had discovered so as to be unmolested by any island creature. We welcomed any work which helped to allay our fears as to the future. Ah. Ah, look, Mama, and the biggest yet. And Ernest didn't even have to bait the hook for me. Into the barrel with him there. <laughs> You should have seen the one that got away. That one dear child always gets away. Where is Ernest? Somewhere. Oh, Lydia, I told you not to let him out of your sight. Don't fuss, Mama. He's coming. Ernest! If I do say so myself, this ladder of mine is a masterpiece. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent is right. Catch, Fritz. There you go. Mom, what? I saw hundreds of red and orange and blue tiny fish today. Did you? My juice, Papa. Beautiful. Ah. And the anemone. Watch out for those. They sting. I'm glad they sting. It's their right to sting. If I were an enemy, I'd want to be able to protect myself. <laughs> sure ah, look what I found. What have you look found? This shell. Ooh. Isn't it a perfect ladle? Where? Where? What's that inside it? It looks so pretty. I picked it for you, Mama. You know, I couldn't afford to buy that flower at home. That's an orchid. An orchid? Hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> and here, the prize. The prize. What do you love the most of all? The most of all, uh... The very most of all to eat, Papa. Oh, to eat? Well, now, let me see. The things that are so good and so expensive. Uh, you don't mean oysters. What? No, Ernest, bless you. Yes, <laughs> and there are millions more. Why, we are coming up in the world, Mrs. Robinson, oysters and orchids, huh? Any pearls in the old oysters? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't want to spoil your fun now, but Professor Robinson, we're at least half an hour late for afternoon school time. Oh, hmm. Father, well, remember you excuse me for the afternoon. All right, Fritz, off you go. Why was Fritz excused? Well, we'll be in that period of medieval history that Fritz has already studied. And Mother, I'm sure he'll learn much more this afternoon off on his own. Off you go, children, to school. I'll join you in a moment. Mrs. Robinson, I think we've produced some pretty remarkable children. I never appreciated them so much before. Well, they've certainly inherited your taste for wildlife. <laughs> Fanny. I know this is an insane adventure, but help will come. It's bound to. And meanwhile, it hasn't been so bad, not so entirely bad now, has it? Hmm? Well, I think that depends on what you consider to be entirely bad. Well, of course, that's quite another discussion. And I've got to get off to school. My pupils are waiting. In uh, medieval Europe, during the reign of Charlemagne, and in case you children should be interested in dates, Charlemagne ruled from the year 771 up until the time of his death in 814. 
It's uh, of no historical importance whatsoever. But uh, Charlemagne loved hunting and swimming, and he was completely dominated in his own household by his wives, of which he had four. Yes, Ernest. Papa, I don't want to seem rude, but medieval history is not so very interesting for me today. Well, after all the years that I have taught this subject, young man, doesn't it occur to you that it might be boring to me, too? Huh? Yes, Lydia. You let Fritz go hunting. That's not very fair. I think if we're to be bored by Charlemagne, Fritz should be bored, too. Well, you've got a point there. And if I may bring up another subject. Yeah. Down in the lagoon where I found the oysters, I saw a turtle. A giant turtle. I bet if we caught him, we'd have enough meat for a month. Well, it's a case of uh, turtles or Charlemagne, isn't it? I'm sure Charlemagne would uh, say turtles, but uh, I'm not so sure what Mother would say. Mother won't mind. I'll get her some bird eggs. All right, we'll continue with Charlemagne tomorrow. In the meanwhile, class dismissed. Yeah! Ernest, you and I off for the turtle hunt. Fast as you can, find your father on the beach and tell him, tell him to build a fire there. Now hurry! Papa's down at the far cove. By the time I get there, we can't do anything. We'll have to start this one again. Some twine, some ribbon, string. Here, give me your sash. You've seen your father do with this. What does he do? He wraps it around and around. And then he pulls both ends. wasn't your fault. The fire should never have been allowed to die out. They couldn't have seen it anyway. They were too far away. And the ship disappeared so quickly. It's all right, darling. There'll be another ship. We won't be here forever. Please don't be angry, Papa. You feel awful about it. I'll try. Then we, we can't tell them we even saw a ship. Papa, or Ernest, or Fritz. Do you think you can keep that secret? It's a big secret. Too big. All right, Mama. Let's just you and I feel awful. <laughs> Up we go, up we go. See, this is where we live, Samuel. We live in a tree, too, you see? But you're not allowed up here, so come on. Come. 
Where is everyone? Papa and Ernest went turtle hunting. Mama went to fetch water. I wish they'd come back. Looks like a storm's coming. Better let the monkey go, Fritz. You know the rules. How was medieval history? Did you learn anything? Charlemagne had four wives. That poor man, right, Samuel? Poor and man, huh? Do you suppose we'll never be rescued? Have to stay here forever? I haven't thought much about it, Betty. There'd be no one here for you to marry. Oh, I wouldn't suffer a bit. In another year, Samuel and I are going to be kings of the jungle. Aren't Samuel. we, Samuel? Samuel, do you know anyone I can marry? That's not really a problem, because we're going to be rescued soon. Come on. Be nice Come on. if someone could say when. All I can say is I hope it isn't too soon, because I love it here. Another monkey, Fritz. And he's just visiting, Mother. Of course, if you were to take a liking to him, I'm sure uh, I could convince him to stay. I'm sorry, Samuel, I try. Meet me tomorrow near the clearing to the right of the hollow tree. Sound the trumpet! Hey, let's go! Hail the conquering heroes! Ha ha ha! To you, O oh Queen of New Switzerland, we tender this beauteous beast of the sea to grace and groan in delicate mutilation upon your royal table. And here's one that's not going on the table. Do you accept, fair madame? <laughs> Fran? Fran? What's the matter with Mama? Fran, Fran, what is it? Hmm? Anton, I look at you and I don't recognize the man I married. Well, I'm afraid I must plead guilty. I'm sure I'm a sore sight. And I wonder if this unshaven, ragged beachcomber who gets such a fierce joy out of building tree houses and catching live turtles <laughs> isn't your real self. Now, would it be such a shock to you if it were, tell me, was that state professor in his serviceable black suit and top hat, was he such an admirable, enviable figure? Huh? Don't you see your effect on the children? Well, I think they're behaving quite remarkably. To adjust as they did to an environment completely foreign to them, to get such fun and joy out of the simple acts of living. Franny, this is no mean accomplishment. I'm not questioning the way you've made some sort of order out of all this. I'm just terribly afraid that you're beginning to find some sort of ridiculous schoolboy fulfillment in this happy game of being savages. Strange we should feel so opposite. To me, it seems that, well, for the first time, we are truly being ourselves. We, Anton, or you? Perhaps you're right. I had hoped we. You're happy here, Anton, in a way you never were at home. I can't deny that. And you're beginning not to care if we're rescued. You even let the beacon fire die out today. Franny, what are you afraid of? Is it a sin to enjoy the beauty of this island? Now, what would you have me do? Walk up and down the beach in a state of desolation looking for passing ships? Yes. I want you to think of nothing. Nothing but passing ships. I want you to think of getting to Salon, of, of the university, of your work, of, of things that are normal and civilized. Not this, this wilderness. Oh, where is the girl? The girl I married, that gay, happy, carefree creature who climbed mountains with me and loved life. Where is she, Franny? Where is she? I'll tell you. She spent too many years keeping a house for you and, and raising your children and putting up a front before your colleagues. And then uprooting herself, giving up everything in the world she cared anything about because of this wild scheme of yours to live in the Far East not knowing that all the while, deep inside you, this is what you really wanted, this, this living like a squirrel in a tree. Oh, now, Franny. Franny, doesn't it occur to you that I love you? Might want to love you more on this island than I did at home with all that stuffy, settled life between us? I hate this island. There hasn't been one moment here I haven't hated. This island has been a prison to me. <laughs> and I how awful to have to say this 
but I don't care if we're never rescued. For myself, I could ask nothing more than to live here forever. All right, Anton. There's no point now in not telling you. Lydia and I saw a ship today, and we couldn't build up the fire in time to signal to it. And the ship sailed away. And you weren't going to tell me this? We didn't want to upset you. Aren't you happy now you let the fire die out? There was this ship. There'll surely be others. No, I am not happy. I... Franny, I have no desire to imprison you against your will. I want no life apart from you or the children. Well, then do something, Anton. Light more beacons. Light them all over the island. Build a raft, tie messages to the legs of birds, anything. <laughs> Only get us away from here. <laughs> one-cent sale bargains. A store full of values, all waiting for you tomorrow morning. And every one of them is a money-back guaranteed Rexall product. The easy way to shop this sale is with this ad. Tonight, after the show, get the whole family together and check this ad in today's Sunday paper. Look, Rexall adhesive tape, regular price, 49 cents. But tomorrow, and for the next six days, two for only 50 cents. Rexall Roball Roll-On Deodorant, regular price, 69 cents. Sale price, two for only 70 cents, twice as much for a penny more. New medicated fast dandruff treatment shampoo, already a bargain at its regular price of one dollar. This week, two king-size bottles, a dollar and one cent. And more, family needs, Clenzo toothbrushes, Famous Rexall MI31 mouthwash. Guaranteed medicines. And Rexall Panavite, a remarkable vitamin mineral formula. And here's one of 56 surprise buys. Not one cent sale items, yet still terrific values. Family size, Rexall aerosol toothpaste, regular price, 98 cents. This week only, yours for just 69 cents. And take the kids along. Just one penny buys them an Indian war bonnet with real feathers. So stock up whole family at the one and only Rexall One Cent Sale. Tomorrow through Saturday. 
and only at your Rexall store. Time passed while we worked together at rebuilding all that the hurricane had destroyed. Never again was the beacon fire allowed to die out. And to chance that no ship pass unseen, it was arranged for each of us in turn to stand a two-hour watch. But inwardly, I had no faith in any of our efforts, for I felt the hurricane had been an angry judgment visited upon me a punishment for my selfishness in allowing the beacon fire to die and thwarting our rescue. I had failed my wife, my family, myself, God, all. You are relieved, lad. Hi, sir. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. No new notions? Notions? Of what, Papa? Oh, of sending out messages? Oh, me messages? Not today, sir. Not today. Well, now, what's happened to that fertile imagination of yours, huh? I guess I was th thinking of other things. Ah, yes, yes. Papa, huh. may I ask you a rather personal question? Well, you may indeed. Why are you so sad, Papa? Sad? You think I seem particularly sad, boy? You try not to, but you're not fooling anyone, Papa. Oh, I guess there are days when people just sort of feel that way, I think, huh? don't you? The new house is finished. We mm. have enough food that anyone can ever want. Seems like we're in splendid condition, Papa. Yeah. Why aren't you having a holiday like the way you were before the hurricane blew in? Well, you know how upset Mother was when that ship sailed away and the fire had died out. I'm afraid I've sorely disappointed her. Yesterday, I saw Mama. You won't believe this, but I saw her going into the jungle alone to look for new plants and flowers. And she has been humming and singing lately, Papa. I think Mama is coming along very nicely. Yes, but I'm still very worried about her. Ernest, we've got to assure Mother and keep on assuring her that we are doing everything we can to make rescue possible. Huh? Off you go now, lad. Yes, sir. Going off duty, sir. Carry on, boy. He doesn't suspect the thing. Good. He gave no indication of even knowing it was his birthday. Well, we're going to give him a proper reminder. Well, let's not waste time now. He mustn't forget a thing. The presents and the decorations. Oh, oh um, oh, yes. You have to bring the cake down, and Ernest, Lydia. don't forget to practice. Lydia. Yes, Mama? We know what we're supposed to do. Now, what are you supposed to do? I forgot. <laughs> Come on, Ernest, let's get uh, the cake. A few more mangoes, and Ernest, if you have time, some oysters. Yes, and we still need something that looks and acts reasonably like a birthday candle. Yes, Mother. Now, Lydia, you are supposed to do the following. First, help me with the decorations. Secondly, fetch me four fresh bird's eggs. And thirdly... That dress, mother. What dress, dear? Yours. Well, darling, this is the only dress I have. It's all right for you to dress yourself up in leaves and flowers, but I'm a little too old to be masquerading as a female aborigine. Pa would love it. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. He would think I was idiotic. He'd never think that about you, Mama. You know how Papa feels about you. He doesn't know how I feel about him. How we all feel. He will tonight. Mama, will you do me one little favor? No, Lydia. Mother, I'm speaking to you now as a woman to a woman. Please come with me. Samuel, you're invited to the party, too. Will you stop sulking and come on out? Mother's promised to be most cordial to you. He's a proud fellow. He's very sensitive about being accepted as one's equal. 
You'll miss all our food, Samuel. Hello, proud fella. Positively consumed with greed. Hey. Liddy, darling, you go fetch your eggs, and I'll think of something to do with the dress. for all thou hast done to make our life possible here in this wilderness. We beg leave to present you with these many fair objects. Thank you. And I, sire, have composed this song especially for this occasion I wouldn't heartfelt dedication to thee. To be lost on an island in the tropical sea is no great disaster or catastrophe. For a happy family, for a happy family, to be lost on an island in the tropical sea is no great disaster or catastrophe. For a happy family, a happy family, a happy, happy family. Happy birthday, Dad. A cake, Papa. Mother. Children, thank you. This is most kind and beautifully thoughtful. Uh, I wish that, well, uh, I'm quite overwhelmed, you see. And, uh, well, you understand I don't deserve all this. And I, I'm wholly unworthy of such a display. And I'm afraid I'll have to get hold of myself. I promise I'll be back very shortly. Of course he did. You should have stayed with the children. 
I'm sure they won't know what to make of me. So go back in and tell them I'll be there shortly, just as jolly as they will have me. Their only concern is for you, Anton. And they don't require you to be anything you're not. No, I mustn't disappoint them in any way. You never have. How lovely you look. Do you know what a sudden, bewildered, unhusbandly stir you are causing in me? Hmm? Well, this is truly the latest in tropical fashion. And remarkably inexpensive, really. Oh, Franny. Franny, how could I have done this to you? Taken you from your home, your friends, your own world. How could I have done this to the children? How, how, Franny, unless I was so self-concerned with wild dreams of escape from responsibility as to be utterly and unforgivably mad. Anton, you must stop making these judgments on yourself. Well, it was more than my judgment alone. I knew that the night of the hurricane. Oh, no, Anton, no. Oh, yes. We have not been judged. We've been blessed. Had we not come here, I should never have seen how I had let my life become narrowed by a, by a world of small fears and necessities. How I was suffocating your spirit and your dreams. But I had no right to those dreams. Oh, you did. No. Those no. dreams of yours, Anton. That claim to live above and beyond. That was what I really fell in love with. I realize that now. And you mustn't give up those dreams for anyone. They're the very heart and soul in you of, of everything that is fine and noble and courageous. What was that sound? Hmm? Oh, probably the uh, echo of the waves on the reef. Huh? Franny, we grow older. Middle age is a great mistake. It should never be allowed. Oh, the heart is the same. These senses are still awake. One still sees and feels. But the dust has begun to settle. One lets it seep in imperceptibly till Everything that once gleamed and shone and had magic to it, it, uh, it becomes dull and commonplace. That's what was happening to us. And I had hoped to change it all, sort of blow the dust off. I hope to do that even here. You have, Anton. Mm. Here on this island, we've learned the true meaning of faith in God and in ourselves. And nothing and no one can destroy it. And, Anton, if we have to stay here the rest of our lives, we shall be happy. Fran, never again will I presume to pass God's judgment on myself. And never, never despair. I've learned that tonight from the children and you. Oh, Freddy. That wasn't the echo of the waves. No, I can't imagine. What is it, Anton? Can't imagine. Bob, did you hear that booming noise? What do you mean? It couldn't be thunder on such a clear night. It sounds too big to be a cannibal drum. How do you know it's too big? You never even heard a cannibal drum. Now, please, Ernest, let's... Let's not start imagining frightening things. I didn't say it was that, Mama. You no, know, it sounds almost like the booming of a cannon. Mama! Jump wing lead! What is it? Where are you? I'm on the hill! Quick, up on the hill, on the high spot. Jump wing lead! Father, they must have seen our beacon fires. Put some more wood on that fire. They'll know we've seen them. Oh, Anton. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. I'm not so sure. This looks very much like a pirate ship to me. What? Oh, <laughs> a pirate ship. How does your song go, that to be lost on an island thing? Huh? To be lost on um, an island in the tropical sea is no great disaster or catastrophe. 
Catastrophe. Oh, a happy family. A happy family. To be lost on an island in the tropical sea. There's no great disaster or But the great adventure of the Swiss family Robinson was ended. And it seemed to us that night that we had made an astonishing discovery. Never abandon the search for El Dorado. Nothing can be more important than this golden dream. And look for its fulfillment not beyond the uttermost mountains or the ultimate seas, but close, very close at hand, in that mysterious and uncharted compass, the island of the heart. Would you like to win one of these three new four Thunderbirds? Or stereo orthophonic hi-fi? Or portable TV? Or this RCA Victor color television set? Well, I'll tell you just how easy it is to have your chance at these and 1095 other exciting prizes. All you do is ask your Rexall druggist about Rexall Super Plenamins. America's largest selling vitamin mineral tablets. There's nothing to buy, nothing to write, and the contest is on now. One more big reason to get on down to your Rexall store first thing tomorrow morning. Shop the Rexall one cent sale for the biggest bargains ever. Swiss Family Robinson has been brought to you with the best wishes of the Rexall Drug Company and the 10,000 independent Rexall druggists who recommend and sell Rexall drug products at the store with the orange and blue Rexall sign. Next week at this time, see Outlook and the premiere of Sabre of London.